here we are. This is Sex Love Psychedelics, and I'm your host, Dr. Kat. Bringing you psychosexual conversations that will leave you intellectually turned on and hungry for more. storylines and you see what's being talked about in, in, or what's viewed in TVs and, and, um, what do you see as the common archetype or the character that, um, of who's, who's seeking abortions or how abortions are portrayed there? Well, I want to start by honing in on a word that you use that has to do with this cultural framing, which is that abortion is a procedure, right? Mm. That, that what we've known to be abortion so far, and we can, we can, that will lead to who gets an abortion, but what we've known of abortion is that it's a procedure, that it's medicalized, that it takes place in a clinic, that you go there and you go through intake and you, um, you know, the, the, it's, the term is surgical abortion. Others will call it aspiration abortion. It's something that is done to you. All of these things come out of the, the way that abortion has been provided in decades past. And uh, they have circulated through our culture um, to reinforce ideas of who, who gets to access an abortion, how do you get one or who gives you one, like all those kinds of transactional pieces have been a part of the language and the culture around abortion. And I will say, it feels so relevant for the conversation with you. There has been so much shame and stigma around abortion itself that, you know, who, who gets abortions? It's people that, you know, had sex irresponsibly mm-hmm. or, you know, are a certain, or a certain class or a certain race. There's, there's demographics that we can get into of who is seeking abortion, but the layer until very recently when it all started to open up with these policy changes and with the increasing of unjust laws, there was this layer of stigma and shame and kind of misunderstanding around abortion where what's really helpful is to zoom out and see that abortion or ending pregnancies or different pregnancy outcomes have been a reality since the beginning of the human experience, right? Like pregnancy is this is this um, uh, spectrum. There are so many things that might transpire over the course of a pregnancy. Uh, one in four ends in miscarriage. There are so many ways that a pregnancy might go. And then you come to the question of control of who gets abortions or or whether or not someone has the ability, the option to control whether they want to bring a pregnancy to term. And that's where the technology piece comes in. That's where um, we've had the option of aspiration or surgical abortion for many decades. And for the last two decades, the abortion pills have come on the scene. And I find the story of the pills so interesting, too, from a cultural perspective, because... The Plan C pill? Yeah, the Plan C pill. So when it was first introduced... Um, it's a, it's a combination of medications, which we can talk about the actual mechanism of action there, but the way that, um, Miffy, Mifepristone, the first came on the scene was as RU486 in France in the eighties. And it was introduced as the French abortion pill. And it was deemed by the minister of health as the moral property of women in France. So positioned in a way that would be right in the woman's hand, right? Right in the control of the woman. And then when it was introduced in the US, it was immediately clamped down with FDA restrictions and only allowed in certain circumstances, in clinics and in providers' offices, not allowed in pharmacies. So it was introduced in this very different way that made it seem unsafe or like it needed to be medicalized. And that was the trajectory of it from there on out. Um, misoprostol, the other medication that makes up the abortion pill regimen, was actually discovered by women in Brazil to have a side effect of ending pregnancy. It's an ulcer medication. It was mm. discovered by the indicators on the label, oh, it, it might end a pregnancy. And so women in Brazil passed this information by word of mouth to spread it as a method um, in a country that had big restrictions on abortion. So I share all that to kind of paint the landscape and then yeah. where we're getting to today is a sort of um, reclaiming of the method in this moment where unjust laws are blanketing half the country, banning, restricting abortion access. We're watching the method be reclaimed into people's hands, truly understanding the transformative nature of abortion pills as 
as an essential part of the the healthcare needs of this country. Yeah, that's I love. I knew that I would just like put the question out there and you would like run with it. <laughs> but it, <laughs> there's such a beautiful, you know, deconstructing this concept of the word abortion. And you're saying, let's zoom out and see this as a whole process of the natural or, you know, the, about the, the human pregnancy, you know, the process of pregnancy, let's make it, let's not just focus on that, but let's zoom it all out. And then here we're seeing the cultural uh, narratives of not just America, but of other countries, even how other countries supported the, um, the agency, the empowerment of people in their pregnancy process, France, Brazil. Yeah. What uh, that makes me think about how they they are viewing right now what's happening in America. <laughs> right. I gosh, that's uh, good. Yeah, there's there's a lot of attention right now on what's happening in America. There's a lot of uh, what I hear from, you know, the international scene is just a lot of watching very carefully because American culture is influential. It does end up affecting decisions that are made in other countries, but also there, I, I hear this sentiment of what are they thinking, right? What is this country thinking? We're going what people are calling backward in time and in human rights and restricting something that in other countries has become so mainstream, so normal, so available. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that is that these other countries, it's become a lot more normalized and we're have, still having a really hard time with, with that integration? It's so political. It really is. Um, it, uh, abortion, you can, you can find some good podcasts and literature about this, but um, abortion was really claimed by the conservative party a couple decades ago, recognizing that there were voters that would be able to be um, adopted by certain candidates or kind of, you know, corralled into certain parties by taking a stance on abortion that was kind of, re I'll say, repositioned as um, moral or religious. And mm -hmm. this whole narrative was created to influence politics and to play with control and power. And um, that has gone really deep. So the, the from what I see, the reason why the U.S.'s relationship with abortion is so different is truly along political lines. And then that, of course, has layers to it that are cultural, that are religious, that are dem demographic and geographic of where people are living in the kinds of pockets. But I, you know, I really see abortion as one dimension of so many larger narratives, so many larger things that are unfolding in this country around race and class. And um, it's, it's not isolated. It has to do with the very same questions that we're asking around our systems of oppression, around the racism in this country that exists, around the classism. And really, I, I see it as cracking open in a similar way that the racial justice movement did a few years ago that we're finally looking at something that's been a part a, a developing or established part of our system for a very long time well that was fun thanks for tuning in lovers and if you want to experience more ecstasy and sexual liberation head over to sexlovepsychedelics.com and learn about how you can join me for any one of my online or live events. And while you're there, grab my free guide on sex and psychedelics. Remember, this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please contact your healthcare provider and local law before pursuing any of the products or psychedelics discussed. And one final note here, I make this show specifically for you. If you're loving the show, then be sure to leave me a review in iTunes or Spotify to let me know. Happy to be here and happy to serve. I'll see you next time on Sex Love Psychedelics. <laughs>